Welcome to Calming Heart, the sounds of David's Psalms. I'm glad you've joined us for this brief moment we share together. I will be playing some of the music that has been brought out of the Psalms. My name is Steve Reese. I play the harp. And over the last several years, I've been bringing the sounds of David's Psalms into recordings. You can find a lot of my music on my website, www.calmingharp.com. I have CDs available and MP3s. And you can go to YouTube. If you go to YouTube and then type in Peregrinati, P-E-R-E-G-R-I-N-N-A-T-T-I, you will find hours of beautiful harp music that you can just play in the background and be calmed with the music that David may have played for his sheep at one time or another. So as we share this half hour, join me and enjoy the sounds of David's harp. So we're going to do something a little different today. Uh, last week, Shirley came in with me on the episode and by the looks of the downloads and everything, I think a lot of you like hearing from Shirley. So we're going to do some more of that this week. Um, Shirley has prepared a talk. We're up in Wisconsin right now at a worship conference this weekend. Um, they're expecting somewhere between 300 and 400 people. We're in the town of Cleveland, Wisconsin, and uh, some beautiful people here. The Gillings have opened their home and yard up to a bunch of people to come through and camp and just have um, come before the presence of the Father. So we're here and just having a great time, great people. And Shirley had prepared a talk, um, and I'm going to let her introduce it, but I just wanted to... Um, let her synopsize it. Probably won't have enough time for her to give the whole thing, but I wanted the main thing because she's talking about how do we live in shalom when the world around us is going crazy. I think she's got a different title for that, and I'm going to let her give you the title, but I just wanted to you to hear from Shirley. It's a great um, concept, and it's from everything we talk about with David and the Psalms. And um, Psalm 139, he says that our there's nothing, nowhere we can go that our Heavenly Father doesn't already, isn't with us. And uh, so I just want to hold on to that thought and surely it's going. And so I'm going to quit talking and I'm going to let her introduce and speak with what's on her heart. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Steve, for allowing me this time to uh, share with your audience. The name of this um, talk is called Standing Firm in a World Dominated by Fear. So the first thing that I want to share with you is the motto that um, Yahweh, I believe, shared with me years ago and I have tried to live by, and it is trust to see what you have had faith to believe and been obedient to do. Several, several years ago, a friend of ours was talking to us on the phone and he said that um, the father had been sharing with him a thought that was pretty profound and wanted him to exercise this thought. And what he said was, God wants obedience at the speed of thought. Now, if you think about that for a minute, how many times does something come into your mind and you go, oh yeah, I need to do that, but I'm busy doing this right now, I'll do it later, and then you forget, or the opportunity passes, or something happens, it's like, oh my goodness, that, that was for me to pray for that person, and I didn't do that. So, I have been practicing 
trying to live obedience at the speed of thought and i can be washing dishes and and suddenly a thought will come into my mind write this down or or respond to that text message or call that person and it's so easy to go oh, i'll do it later i'm busy right now i'll do it later but then the holy spirit is like no, I gave that idea to you right now, and I want you to do it right now. I have a reason and a purpose you might not be aware of, but I'm aware of it, and I'm sharing it with you. So as you listen to this um, mini presentation of Standing Firm in a World Dominated by Fear, take um, interest, take an active interest in, in the thoughts that come to your mind and put them down because maybe there's something there that Yahweh wants you to act on right now. Obedience at the speed of thought. So, I don't know, a few months ago, Steve and I were listening to a talk by Jordan Peterson being interviewed by Dennis Prager on his show. And Dennis asked him, he said, um, he said, Dr. Peterson, Jordan, do you believe in God? And Jordan Peterson sat silent for several seconds. And then he said, you know, I hesitate to answer that question because of what it implies. Do I believe in God? Well, what does it mean to believe in God? Because we're very flippant with our answers. Oh, of course I believe in God. So take some of these scriptures, for instance, Matthew 10, where Yeshua is talking to his disciples. He's commissioning them and he says, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And not just preach, he says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. So do we believe in God that he'll actually move his spirit through us to do these things? Or do we pass these opportunities up because we're afraid? We're afraid that we won't see results. We're afraid of what it will do to our reputation. We're afraid we'll be embarrassed by doing something that has no outcome that we want to see. Do we believe in God that God is faithful to do what he says he will do? Or how about this one? And the Lord said, if you had faith, as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted into the sea, and it should obey you. Do we believe in God when he says his word is real and true, and you can count on it, take it to the bank? Do we believe? Or, and all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Do we believe that we're going to receive what we ask for? Many times we justify the lack of response or we compromise or we say, oh, well, do we believe in God? And this last one where Yeshua said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son. Do we believe, can we truly answer that question? Do you believe in God? There's a lot behind that, a lot worth thinking a lot worth thinking about. Don't just dismiss it, but spend time meditating on do I really believe in God? Oswald Chambers from My Utmost for His Highest, a July 9th reading called The Great Probing, said the one who has something to trust in is the last one to come anywhere near saying, I will serve Yahweh. Like Dietrich Bonhoeffer said in his book, A Life Together, community won't happen until there is no other choice because we have all these other things that we can trust in, not just Yahweh alone. We say, continuing to quote from My Utmost for His Highest, we say, if I really could believe, but the point is, if I really will believe 
So when God says, I will never leave you or forsake you, how do we answer or more appropriately, how should we answer our response? When he says, I will never leave you or forsake you, we could respond by saying, Yahweh is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. When Yahweh says, follow me, our response, Hineni, here I am. When God says, deny yourself, are we like Paul when we say, though I abound in little or in much, I am content? When God says, do not fear, do not fear. Do we run and hide? Or are we like those that Daniel says will do, will know their God and stand firm and take action? Last year, when we were touring the 48 capitals of the lower United States, right in the middle of the pandemic, there were states that said quarantine required. There were states that said mass required. There were states that do not travel and people were saying, aren't you afraid of roadblocks? We've heard their roadblocks. Aren't you afraid, afraid that you'll, you'll be arrested or, or, or the police will, will stop you and question you. And there were some states, well, quite a few states actually, where we had to press through the fear that was on the land because we had a commission from Yahweh to go to all these capitals. There is so much fear on the land. You have to ask yourself, do I believe in God? Do I believe his promises are real, that they are true, that they are for me, that they are for today, that no matter what my eyes of flesh see, I will trust in Yahweh. I will allow him to use me as his instrument to allow rivers of living water to flow from me to a very dry and thirsty land. I will be his hands and feet ministering to his people. I will not hide for there is still light. Yeshua said work while there is light. Darkness is coming, but while it is light, work 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 at sharing his message work at sharing his love be a light in a dark land as as the world grows darker light will be intensified because everyone knows when you go into a pitch black room and someone lights a match or a candle or turns on one bulb all eyes are drawn to that. That is what we are to be, a light in a very dark world. Yeshua said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. All these things, food, clothing, shelter, they'll be added. But first seek God's kingdom. And then he says, do not be anxious for tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Are you practicing your God life now? I heard someone say, well, I know, I know there's going to come a time when God's going to call me to, uh, to get up and do some of these marvelous exploits, these greater things than he did. But until then, I, I'm just content sitting in my house. What has God called you to? But your fear or your lack of belief is keeping you from accomplishing his will and his purpose on this earth are you being faithful from luke chapter 16 yeshua said he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much and he that is unjust unjust in the least is unjust also in much if therefore you have not been faithful in the least or the unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches. So 
<clears throat> there are two primary things I believe that we can begin or continue to do right now that will prepare us to stand firm in a world dominated by fear. I like this definition of fear being evidence being made to appear real. The first thing is to understand the role of joy. Joy and happiness are not the same. Joy is that deep knowing that someone is glad to be with me. Whether I am in sadness or despair or disgust or anger or fear or shame. We believe falsely that joy is equated with happiness. Like the giddier we are, the more happy or joyful. But this is a setup for depression, resentment, sadness, despair. Yeshua told us that the devil comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Is your eternal inheritance on the line because you have been allowing the little G gods to control your emotions? Hebrews chapter 12 tells us that Yeshua, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So let's tie in these little G gods with um, from with the commandments. We all know or should know the Ten Commandments. The first one says, "I am Yahweh your Elohim who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other little G gods before me." So Yahweh is the supreme God of all the gods. He alone is to be worshipped and adored and adored. Did you know there are over 200 verses that mention little G gods? So now let's look at commandment number two. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Now this commandment deals with the physical manifestation of these little g-gods. Yahweh is acknowledging that there are a multitude of little g-gods, but we are not to worship them. He is the only God deserving of our worship. But these little g-gods have inoculated themselves into the very fabric of our life in this world. They, I believe, are primarily responsible for our lack of joy and shalom. What are the little G gods in your life, the idols in your life, and whether it's your car or your the money you make or your home, your children even, whatever it may be, if these usurp the position of Yahweh in your life, they are a God to you and behind these we'll call them idols, there is a spirit entity controlling these actions. Is it no wonder the world is in the mess it is in, the darkness is encroaching? We have not cleaned the idols out of our home. Israel was told, get rid of your idols before you go in the land. Jacob told his family, get rid of your idols, and he buried them under a tree. God wants to be worshipped solely, solely by us. He wants a bride who is pure and holy for his son, Yeshua. That means there can be no little g-gods before him. The second area is the ability to shalom your body. Shalom is when everything is harmonized and working together correctly. The right things are in the right place in the right amount, so everything pleases Yahweh. That's when we have reached Shalom. 
In shalom, all things work together for good for those who are synchronized with Yahweh. Now, there are things that come against us besides these little G-gods. We have um, in, in us, a term has been coined called relational circuits. This is how we interact with each other. These relational circuits can be turned off, and that's when we, uh, we feel tense, dark, snappy, negative, mad, irritable. We don't care about others or what they may think or feel. We're rigid. Um, anxious, angry, tired, blah, impatient, brooding, restless. We have cravings. We're non-relational. We're sharp. We're abrupt. We're critical, judgmental, snappy, annoyed. When our relational circuits are on, we feel warm and open. We notice less tension in our muscles. We're peaceful and caring. We're more connected within ourselves and others. We're grounded, clear, warm, engaged, peaceful, caring, flexible, relaxed. There are things you can do to turn your, your actual relational circuits on when you are dark and snappy and tense. No one wants to hang around someone like that. And your witness of Yeshua definitely is lacking when your relational circuits are off. And there are ways to shalom your body. You can do this by breathing. Breathe in deeply in for a count of six or eight seconds. Hold it for another six or eight seconds and then release it for another eight to 12 seconds and do that till you feel your body relaxing. An amazing um, way to shalom your body is to join a choir to sing and acquire researchers are beginning to discover that singing is like an infusion of the perfect tranquilizer the kind that both soothes your nerves and elevates your spirits and there are choirs virtual choirs um, similar to the blessing that that's being sung that's a virtual choir there are other choirs that you can join to do that and mindfulness meditation is another one this is rather than dwelling on the past or dreading the future mindfulness encourage awareness of a person's existing surroundings crucial to this is a lack of judgment so rather than reflecting on the annoyance of a long wait a practitioner will simply note the weight without judgment how many of you have been in a grocery store and there's a mother there who has three or four kids and they're all screaming and crying and acting up and running around and, and your tendency is to be irritated at that mother for not taking care of her kids and and therefore in that place of irritation you can't pray but if you look at that air that that situation and you calm yourself and you're aware of what's going on then you have the ability to to enter into prayer for that mother and her children um, and prayer is an amazing thing don't forget to pray. That's our active interaction with Yahweh. Um, share appreciation. Always express gratitude for whatever is around you. Even when you don't feel like it, express gratitude. I've got a cool story about that, but I'll share it on another, another talk because I see I'm out of time. And the last one is to grow joy. Don't be afraid to smile when you greet those you love. Uh, listen to other people, treat each other with dignity and respect. Uh, these things will help us stand firm in a world dominated by fear. They will put us in that place where we can be that light, that witness of Yeshua's love in a very dark world. Enjoy Psalm 134. It's my favorite. And... Um, Thank you, Steve, for this time.
So I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Stay tuned, as I say. A little fun. I have many more songs to share with you. I have more to share about how this all comes together. And I pray that you will share and help people, especially those you see stressed, especially in these times that we're going through. Bring people to this calming and this peace and this rest that this beautiful music of the Psalms of David brings to each of our lives. Thank you for listening. Hope to see you next week. Many, many blessings to you all today.